And I promise you, if you were a 15 year old kid, you're a 14 year old kid, you wanna get into motorcycles and you don't have any money to do it, this is a great way to get into it. All right, so you're 15, 16, fuck, maybe 14, whatever. And you wanna make some money and you also wanna get into motorcycles. There's this really cool thing, it's called flipping shit. You could do it with shoes, you could do it with cars, you could do it with bikes, you could do it with houses, you know, whatever. It just depends on what your budget is. Now, the way this works, real simple. You buy a bike for cheap because it has a few problems, you sell it for hire. Or even if it doesn't have any problems, you buy for cheap because there's a motivated seller, whatever, and then you sell it for a little bit higher. One caveat that I'll say right before anything else, uh, there are some legal things you gotta be aware of and every state has slightly different legalities regarding this. Check your local laws, check your state laws. Um, usually there's some sort of limit on how many bikes you can sell, how many uh, vehicles you can put in your name, whatever. Um, so just be aware of that. But I did this when I was 15 or so, really trying to get into bikes. And it helped a lot because one of the coolest parts of it is that you get to ride a shitload of other bikes um, for essentially free. So if you want to be able to ride, you know, an R6 or some shit like that for a few months, but you don't know if you really want that kind of bike, this gives you the opportunity to do that. The base process for how this works is you go on to somewhere like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or whatever. I found the most success on Facebook Marketplace. And you're going to find the lowest the lowest price bike in your budget. And this can work on, on all different kinds of budgets, you know. It doesn't just have to be well, no, I need to buy, you know, a five grand bike and then, you know, maybe I'll sell it for six. Uh, now. Nah. Oh, hello. Oil. You know, the way I started was I bought a, uh, what I buy? It was like a 1974 Honda CB300, something like that, CB360, CL360 maybe, and I bought that bike for $200. It was originally priced at four. I bought it for two, and I wanted to try to get it running, but I wasn't able to do so, so I uh, sold it for $400, which was a pretty sweet sale. You know, you doubled in... Uh, doubled your initial investment it's pretty sweet and then as you grow you know you can get higher and higher the bike I bought after that I bought for 500 bucks sold it for 15 granted I had to put a lot more work into that bike but nonetheless like it is totally possible to do those kinds of things and it's super cool when you uh, are able to swing it and by doing that I got to a point where you know, all of a sudden, holy shit, I have a, a few thousand dollars to play around with. I can actually buy a bike I really want that, you know, doesn't need to be fixed up, doesn't need to have all these uh, issues with it for me to afford it. I could just afford a normal, perfectly good bike. Why is there so much traffic? And by doing that, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I can... Okay, cool. I can have a I can have a supermoto, and then maybe a few months later, I'm tired of the supermoto. I want to buy a sport bike. I sell the supermoto. Maybe I I broke even on that bike. Maybe I made a few hundred dollars, whatever. Then I could buy a sport bike. You know, and then and you'll have some money left over. I will say it's a lot easier if you already have a job. You know, so if you're a, a teenager and you're working at like Chipotle or whatever. Um, Having a job already helps a lot with that. You know, being able to afford parts and being able to afford, um, you know, maintenance. Because a lot of the times when you find these bikes that are priced the way they are, 
you know they're priced like that for a reason things to stay away from when you're doing this i think if you're just starting out don't buy uh newer bikes don't buy bikes with a lot of electronics because that becomes such a pain in the ass you know electronics just in general suck to uh work with but you know if you're buying like a dirt bike or something you get yourself a two-stroke those things are super easy to work on fuck even a four-stroke still really easy to work on compared to you know having like a zx10 or a fireblade with all kinds of different problems on it that gets difficult dealerships don't don't do this with a dealership you, you do this private party avoid bikes that have rebuilt or salvaged titles generally when you go to resell that bike you know let's say you you buy a bike in i don't know november and you it takes you a month to source the parts it needs to get it all fixed up and shiny but it has a rebuilt title like that thing ain't selling you know it's going to take you a lot longer and you're not going to make anywhere near as much money off of it because it's got you know plenty of other issues as is and as a buyer when you're looking to go buy a bike or a car or anything and it's been rebuilt rebuilt or it has a salvage title talk to me you don't want to buy those things because they might have some gremlins hiding in them that you just aren't aware of another thing never pay full price never um, unless it's a you know perfect right on the money price and maybe you know the dude or whatever you know look around go on Kelly Blue Book see what the average price is and then you're like okay well it needs XYZ what's it gonna cost me to fix XYZ what's the labor cost to fix XYZ because even though you might be fixing it yourself hello officer even though you might be fixing it yourself um, you can factor in those labor costs into negotiation so let's say you search on Facebook marketplace you found a bike that's a good deal um, maybe let's say it's a it's a ninja 300 or a ninja 400 or whatever and it was bought by a beginner who dropped the bike you know from a standstill it's a little bit scuffed maybe the fairings have a light crack in it whatever but as far as engine components fine it's got low miles um, this dude bought it new from the dealership and then He dumped it and he was like, you know what, bikes aren't for me. Totally cool, that happens all the time. You can go ahead, find out what it costs to, you know, source new fairings, find out what it costs, or what a mechanic would quote you to install them, and then you go meet up the dude. You're like, hey, I like the bike, but obviously it has some problems it's gonna cost me this much to buy new fairings and it's gonna cost me this much to pay somebody to fix them. Can you go down, I don't know, 500 bucks, 600 bucks. And he's like, you know what? He's probably gonna be like, oh, I can go down maybe 300. And you're like, mm, that's still a little bit too low for me, you know, like, or a little bit too high for me. Don't be afraid to walk away from, from a bike, you know? If something just, it doesn't feel right, maybe it's not a good deal, walk away from it, it's totally cool. There's plenty of bikes especially in the winter. Winter is buying season. Um, that's when nobody's riding and everybody's getting rid of their old bikes. It's totally cool. Oh, it looks like the GoPro died. It's totally cool to buy a bike during that time. And then if you wanna get real fancy with it, you can buy a couple, sit on them over winter, get them all dialed let's say maybe you have four five sitting in the garage then when summer comes around prices are going to be a little bit higher because it's riding season now then you can post them all up at the same time and you'll maximize the amount of profit you'll make on them the other really cool thing with doing this is 
you get a lot of sales experience you get sales experience as a teenager that helps you a lot just in life you learn how to sell higher ticket items to people who both have a lot of money or may not have a lot of money and knowing the difference between those two types of people and how to sell to them respectively is really really cool again don't break your local laws don't get hit up by the IRS or any of that jazz it's not worth it um, you know this won't replace a full-time job but if you're interested in motorcycles you want to learn how to work on bikes and you want to make some money at the same time this is an awesome way to do it only other thing I would say is don't scam people there's plenty of that in the car world in the bike world you know you don't want to start screwing over people by buying a shitty bike barely fixing it just fixing it enough to hide the problems and then selling it at a huge markup you know no matter which way you justify that you're kind of a dick so don't do that um, unless you want to be an asshole but I don't know take that somewhere else I can make another video on more specific you know tips and tricks and whatnot for all this but it, it really just boils down to really simple uh, concepts you know buy low sell high dial in the bike you know um, when you're negotiating figure out you know be able to negotiate to a the lowest price you can but don't be unrealistic you know you got to live in reality a little bit and be like okay well you know I'm probably not gonna get this $10,000 bike for 3500 make sure you fix stuff right um, that's I guess a really cool thing that this teaches you is how to sell or I'm sorry how to fix this will teach you how to fix really well but do it right the first time do it right from the jump so you don't uh, end up giving a bike to somebody that has some serious issues that you only made worse or maybe you just temporarily fix them oh what other things oh one thing people really underestimate is cleaning your bikes so as a seller when you're selling a bike if you have a bike that's been sitting in a garage it's covered in dust maybe it's a dirt bike and you rode it recently and it's covered in mud like get that shit off your bike looks a lot cleaner when it's completely clean and it's nice and shiny and that will almost artificially inflate the value off the bat so don't be shy with cleaning clean your bikes clean them well take good pictures when you list them take stuff that is um, eye-catching when you're looking on Facebook find the bikes that you would want to buy if you could afford them and take inspiration from those listings you know have a well thought out uh, little paragraph on your listing that describes the bike you know don't overcomplicate it too much put the you know year make model whatever talk about it a little bit don't just copy and paste some shit from Wikipedia about the bike but write your own well thought response in there and people will appreciate that if you can give more information off the bike without people having to look at it uh, that saves you time that saves them time and it just makes everybody's life a little bit easier I don't know there's plenty of other smaller details but that's basically it and I promise you if you were a 15 year old kid you're a 14 year old kid you want to get into motorcycles and you don't have any money to do it this is a great way to get into it so feel free go out there go make some money go do some cool stuff ride some cool bikes and have fun with it Let me know if you want a part two. Peace.